a little boy asked me, he said, Mr. Tatum, he said, are you a hero of Iwo Jima? I said, no, son, I'm only a survivor. We buried all the heroes. My mother and father were involved in the pipelining industry where they built these huge pipelines across the nation in the early 20s and 30s. We lived in Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, all these different places where you built pipelines. And then my father died in 1934 and left my mother with four children. To survive, we moved to California and lived with my uncle who was already here. And when I was 15 years old, uh, World War II broke out. And I was a paper boy at the time. When I was folding papers, I'd read the headlines. We were in deep trouble in America, and everybody wanted to join. If you weren't going to join, they were going to draft you anyway. So I wanted to join the Marine Corps because I felt, God, those guys got the best-looking uniforms. <laughs> so the next several years, until I became 17, I pestered my mother every day to let me join the Marine Corps. And finally, when I got to be 17, I kept pestering her. She said, if they'll take you, they can have you. <laughs> So uh, she signed the papers, which your parents had to do at that age, and I went down to the post office with my mother, and she signed for me to join the United States Marine Corps. There's nothing more fun than being a Marine <laughs> at that time. Here you are with a bunch of young guys. There was nothing to do. There's no newspapers, no radio, and the only thing they did was try and think up tricks to pull on people. You knew you were there for a reason that somewhere along the line, you're gonna go in combat. I don't know anybody that could claim they weren't scared, because here you're going into an island with who knows how many enemies on it, and you're gonna be lucky if you make it. I was there 15 days at Iwo Jima. We were on the front lines all the time. My company had 258 men when we went ashore. We left with 38. Not only were they wounded and dead and gone, you're still here, and is it going to happen to you next? At this point, I exceeded my capacity for terror and stress and death and everything. I had combat fatigue. I was doing erratic things, so they kicked me off the island. How many people see somebody they know killed in front of their eyes? And another one, another one, another one. I don't care who you are, it's going to affect your thinking. That's the Bronze Star. And that's the medal I received from the Marine Corps for my action at Hill 362. When I used a machine gun on them to save Steve and Van. Two of my best friends have just been shot. And in my rage, I ran out there and I grabbed the machine gun and I fired it from the hip into this cave and annihilated the Japanese. When Steve's been carried away on the stretcher, he just kind of... <laughs> kind of gave me the okay sign. Van survived, and Steve died during the night. So it was a very traumatic thing to see happen. One of the highlights of my life was was being invited to San Francisco. And they had a ceremony where they awarded this to me. And my mother was there to see it. Probably the greatest thrill you could ever have is to be home and know that the war is somewhat behind you at that particular time and uh, find out that uh, people still loved you <laughs> and you were with people that you loved. The war was over and it was kind of a good time for everybody and uh, you're 19 or 18 years old and what do you do if the only thing you ever did was be, be a Marine? <laughs> so you gotta go get a job. But I always wanted to be a race car driver. So I devoted a lot of my life to learning to be a race car driver. And I really liked that. I 
But I felt the obligation as a survivor to also relate the events to the people at home. So I wrote a story, my first story, I wrote it about John Bassalone. And the Leatherneck bought it and published it for me. And it was called The Death of Manila John Bassalone. And after I did that, somebody said, you ought to write the whole story. So I decided to do it. And I started writing the book Red Blood, Black Sand. I owe that to all of them and uh, to tell the story about these men that fought on Iwo Jima, a battle that cost 6,800 American lives and 30,000 wounded. They can't ever forget this.